indium is a really fascinating material and we're going to show you why it was called indium, how you can mold things out of it and how you can do some reactions and Neil's going to have some real fun. Neil has quite a few samples of indium because it is a slightly poisonous element and people give it to him rather than having to dispose of it themselves. And so he has a selection of pieces of rods and wires and a really quite nice th thick wire that was originally coiled and he showed how you can just pull the coil apart. And even this thick wire is so bendy that when you push your hands together, it just bends with almost no effort at all. Look, oh my God, who's that? <laughs> he still he lives. Indian wire. It's very, very malleable, very, very soft and very easy to form into shapes. But what was really nice was that he made a ball of this wire and then thumped it with a hammer. You know Neil has a big selection of hammers and produced quite a nice flat sheet. These pieces of wire essentially cold moulded together and as soon as I saw the sheet I thought we should try and make an impression of a coin. So I produced a British 20 pence piece, which has a nice picture of Her Majesty the Queen, and put it on the indium. And Neil hit it with a hammer. Of course, he hit the side with not the Queen's picture on it, out of respect. And we got a very nice impression of the Queen. On the second attempt, it was even nicer. though he did bend my coin. And it's really remarkable how much detail can be pressed into this soft metal. You can even see her earring. I didn't know the Queen wore an earring. I've never looked at her portraits in such detail. Then, because we have many viewers in the United States, we felt it was only right to do an impression of an American coin. So we chose a quarter. Neil conveniently had one hanging on the wall of his office and that also produced an impression. But not quite as beautiful as the impression of Her Majesty. But then it was time to do slightly more serious experiments. And one of the things about indium and the reason why I've used it in my career is that it has really quite a low melting point just above 150 degrees centigrade and it can be used for soldering things. We therefore wanted to demonstrate how easily you can melt it. So Neil put quite a large amount of indium into a boiling tube, heated it up and you can watch it melting. And then when it melted, he thought it was a pity to waste the liquid metal, he poured it into a little mould and made a sort of hemisphere of indium. And once he'd got it out, being Neil, he couldn't resist the hammer again, and so he hammered it again, almost flat. Uh, again. When I was using indium as solder for my research, I was soldering gold thermocouples, thermocouples for measuring very low temperature. And I remembered that when I was doing this, sometimes the gold would melt because the indium alloyed with the gold and caused it to melt, which of course ruined the thermocouple. So I had a small piece of gold thermocouple wire left, I found in my cupboard in here, and I wanted Neil to dissolve it in his liquid indium. First of all, we made a mistake because we forgot that there was varnish on the wire, but he burnt that off. And even so, we never got it to work. I don't know whether I was particularly clumsy when I was a student using indium solder 
or we were doing something else wrong. But it was a bit of disappointment. However, the next experiment was really good. Many of you may think that the element Indium was named after the country India. I'm here in India, in Mumbai, what used to be called Bombay. Behind me is the gateway to India. Because there are lots of elements named after countries or states, Californium, Gallium, Germanium, and so on. But in fact, it turns out that Indium was named after a colour, the colour indigo, which is the sort of violet colour that you see in rainbows. When Indium was first discovered, it was discovered actually as a line in a spectrum, a violet line, before they had isolated any of the metal. So Neil decided that we should try and see this violet colour, this indigo colour. And we tried two experiments. The first one was just to take a crucible with indium in it, to heat the indium up till it melted, and then put a blowtorch on it, that is a high temperature gas flame, and see what we could see. And there was a really nice indigo colour. Brady was really excited. Unfortunately, that was just the time I chose to go out of the room to a meeting, so I missed it. You got it, baby. You got it. Actually, they didn't see the colour straight away, but they had to heat the Indian pretty hard, and then the colour appeared. I think the reason is that the colour comes from atoms, not very many atoms in the gas phase. So you've got to heat the indium up to a very high temperature, and once it is in the gas phase, it is hot enough for the electrons to be excited in the atoms. And then when these electrons return to their original level, they give out light. It is a characteristic of indium that because of the energy levels that the light comes out at this very characteristic violet indigo colour, which other elements don't produce. So it was quite easy for the German discoverers of the element to notice that there was something unusual, this unusual line. Then I suggested that Neil should try dissolving indium in bromine. The reason being that most indium salts are colourless and bromine is red, so I thought it would look nicer on the video. It looked nice, but the indium didn't dissolve. So it was a bit of a disappointing experiment. So it was good I wasn't there. But Neil is a huge believer in nitric acid to dissolve almost anything except gold. So he poured concentrated nitric acid on the indium and was not disappointed. Great bubblings bubbles of NO2, the brown gas, and the indium at least partly dissolved. The indium is dissolving and making indium nitrate. That's indium 3 plus ions and NO3 minus ions. We never isolated the indium nitrate, but because I hadn't been there, Neil thought he would try and show me the color again. This time, he took some wooden splints, these are just very thin bits of wood, and dipped it into the nitric acid solution, which now contained indium ions, and put that in the flame, and you could see the nice indigo colour. I'd never seen that before, and so it was really quite an exciting first. I still think the purple colour of plutonium's three salts are nicer, but we can't do plutonium in Neil's lab yet. So, indium is a good substitute. Professor, are many other elements named after colours? Um, well, iridium is named after its many coloured salts, rather like the English word iridescence. And I believe that rhodium is also named after the red colour of one of its salts. And I'm sure our viewers will remind me of lots of other elements that are named after colours, but I can't think of any immediately. There's a really important use for indium, which is in almost 
any sort of computer display screen, which consists of liquid crystals or some similar material sandwiched between two pieces of glass. Obviously, you have to be able to see through the glass or you won't see the display, but the glass, the inside surface of the glass, has to conduct electricity, otherwise you cannot activate the pixels. So what happens is that the glass is coated with a material called indium tin oxide. I sent emails all over the university to try and find a sample of glass with indium tin oxide. And then Neil said, I've got a big piece. So I needn't have bothered, I could have just asked Neil. What you see is there's a sheet of glass which has a thin coating of indium tin oxide on one side and not on the other. If you take a meter that measures electrical resistance, you can see that on the glass side it doesn't conduct electricity at all, but on the other side where there's the indium tin oxide, as you move the probes of the meter apart, you can see the resistance goes up and down and it does conduct electricity. It doesn't conduct it terribly well, but it's transparent and it does conduct enough for displays. There is quite a serious problem in terms of sustainability. Where are the computer screens going to come for your children, your grandchildren? Because the supplies of indium are beginning to run out. So it's really very important that when you finish with your LCD screen, when you finish with your computer, your smartphone, you should get it recycled so people can begin to reclaim these elements. Or you may find that when you get to your iPhone 20 or iPhone 30, there won't be enough indium to be put on the screens. Obviously, we try to bring you as much chemistry as possible here in our videos, but if you really want to fill your boots, why not check out The Great Courses Plus? Have a look at this. 60 half-hour lessons with a Georgetown University expert, all about chemistry. Everything's here. Essentially, it's guiding you through a full college-level chemistry curriculum. And this is just one of an ever-growing library of courses they have, covering all sorts of subjects. You name it, they're going to have it. No tests, no homework, just lots of knowledge. You can do them on your computer, tablet, phone, whatever. For a free trial, go to thegreatcoursesplus.com slash periodic videos, so they know you came from here. Should be on the screen, down in the description. Check them out, people. And our thanks to them for supporting this video.